ever had. <laughs> Joan always knows where Catherine can be found. You think she was Catherine's personal secretary? <laughs> oh, how do you solve a problem like Cathy? She's got all the attention, you don't stand a chance. You try to pout and pick up and pose and stare. But she's got all the men in the palm of the hand. Oh, how do you solve a problem like Cathy?
I am the musical one in the family, are you ready? <laughs> For those who don't know, I'm John. I'm little Dan. <laughs> but it really, it's, it's an amazing occasion to have your eldest daughter and my little girl turn 21. I've just written a little speech about the occasion and I can read it in this light. I, um, I've titled it, Lady of Contrast. <laughs> Lady of Contrast. And as Joan said when I, when I uh, read that out, she said, hmm, uh, Princess of Paradigm. Now, here are some of the contrasts I want to talk about. The first two words that describe, describe a contrast are rest and zest. Let me talk about one occasion in relation to rest. Catherine, before she was born, decided she was going to stay in the womb. Two weeks after the due date, it was time, the doctor said it's time, Joan said it's time, I'm going to do something about this, so she was induced. And it st still took 18 hours of hard labour with Catherine trying to crawl the way back up into the before eventually we got her out. So she loves her rest. One other thing I should talk about, and I'm sure many probably know about this, once she's in bed, it's very hard to get her out. But of course she comes out and then the zest starts. And in the zest, we've already had a lot of it, we've spoken about the politics she's involved in, the SRC at school, uh, the Parramatta experiences, uh, her zest with the arts. Uh, and she's been involved in that since uh, a wee little kid and uh, always been very, very talented. It was quite natural. It came from her mother, of course. Absolutely, she said. Uh, she really opened our eyes when, we, when she was last year of primary school in New Zealand in Auckland at Kadima College. Uh, she starred in a show there and just took the house to absolutely amazing performance. And from then on we uh, came back to Australia, she went through Kadima College and, uh, and a number of other, uh, Carlingford of course, and then more recently at Dramac at Macquarie University. And it's been a real zest that cuts out through um, drama, singing, dancing. So that's the rest and zest. Next contrast, that's the light, that's the next contrast is Flotation versus fixation. I should say on fixation, probably could use the word determination. Kath, uh, as many know, uh, tends to be out of the body occasionally. <laughs> Particularly when it comes to wallets, driving licenses, uh, key cards from banking. Um, I think you must have gone through how many junk how many jungles oh, no. school? There were probably twenty different jungles over the three or four years she was at Carnival. Lost. Never found. A violin she left on the station at Strathfield, it came back. And then uh, the one thing about Kat, she had to, has got a guardian a guardian angel. Nearly everything she leaves behind ends up coming back one way or another. So that's on the flotation side. On the fixation side, or the determination side. Uh, when she was about seven months, eight months, she showed an absolute determination. She wanted to get at books all the time in bookshelves. And a whole lot of low bookshelves. There wasn't much we could do without just throwing all the books away. So I decided we better teach her that she doesn't touch these books. So after much stern words, eventually a little smack on the hand, determined look and came in the face back to the book straight away. Another smack on the hand. And it continued for about four months. Absolute <laughs> determination that his books were hers. Determination uh, when Alexis was born. Difference in age is what, about uh, four, years. four years. So Catherine was four. Alexis was born. She named her Flower. <laughs> it didn't matter what anybody said or did. Alexis's name was Flower for a year or two after that. Nobody could change it. Absolute determination. Well, Jane has actually got a permanent problem with identity. Let me tell you about the next one. At about four or five, 
Catherine decided she was a horse. <laughs> We walked down the street with her and she would pour at the ground. <laughs> and she'd snort and whinny. <laughs> you'd talk to her and she'd whinny back. This happened. How long, John? Two um, years? No, Three years? it wasn't that long. It felt like it. Felt like it. across <laughs> her <laughs> Would not change. Snails. Let's get on to the, uh, the next contrast. Beautiful and bossy. Talk a little bit about the bossy side first. Work out why I can't read. First of all, Catherine can be a little opinionate, opinion, opinionated. No? No. <laughs> She's actually never wrong. <laughs> in, ter in terms of being bossy, let me tell you about one, probably the first one that really came to, aside from the bookshelf, that came to, to note in our memories. When Catherine was about four, she was in a nativity play. I think Kate and others would have been in the same play. Catherine played Mary. And at that stage, she was already into drama and acting and, and making sure everybody else was doing the right thing. And so as she was playing Mary, originally she had Jesus in her arms, but she couldn't use her arms to direct the other kids. So in the middle of it, she put Jesus back in the cradle, started rocking with her foot and started directing all the other kids. That's not Catherine now, is it? I think those from Carlingford uh, would, would know how great Catherine is as a leader and how bossy she can be. <laughs> um, also, Catherine uh, has been very actively involved in church, university, Parramatta, Dramac, all, the, all those. And I've heard lots of stories from all of those about how she can be very strong in getting her way. As far as being beautiful, she, Catherine is a very soft person. Her dad can talk about that a lot. I mean, I've seen her and she's, she's in my arms so much uh, that we... we uh, I, I, what are you talking about? She, um, she loves life. She has purpose in life. She loves the people she's with all the time. She loves babies and young children. If you look at the photographs over there, and we went through all the photographs trying to put this collage together, and probably one in every two photo uh, the photographs, Catherine had a baby in her arms. Wherever she goes, she seems to pick him up and, and spend time with him. Catherine teaches scripture once a week at the local school, and, and she just delights in the way those young kids develop, and she takes so much ownership and, and, and delight in them. The last contrast I want to talk about is coordinated and uncoordinated. <laughs> For those that have walked down the street with Catherine, it's very hard to get a hundred metres without her tripping over a curb, running through a door, running with somebody else. <coughs> However, put her on a stage, ask her to dance and sing, and her coordination is absolutely perfect. Absolute contrast, lady of contrast. She, uh, we, we've talked a little bit, and the others have too, about her drama and singing, and that's the love of her life and the delight that Jane and I have had in her. Nativity plays, primary school plays, McDonald College, she's been 12 months there. Now, Carlingford, obviously, in, in all the uh, drama and, and, uh, and musicals, and then Dramac, uh, and lots of others. I think, um, it was Sammy Davis Jr. Jane was reminding that there was one, once asked, uh, "When does he perform? When, he, when is he? When is he on, is he on stage? When is he performing?" He replied, uh, "I only have to open the fridge door. The light goes on, and I'm off, singing my heart." <laughs> I'd like to just comment on some of her achievements. At school, academically, she did very well. School life, she achieved a lot through that society. She threw herself into that into that life. President of the SRC, Young Citizen of the Year for Parramatta when she was 18, 19. Uh, 
the singing and acting we've talked about, fingers crossed, just finished her uh, media degree. Very independent lady, now left home, and, and we delight in that. We, we, uh, we, are wishing her, we are wishing her well in it, but we delight in it not that we that Catherine moved and left her, left us, because we certainly miss Kathy Catherine around home. But we know that, that, that as Alexis and others have said, she has done so much in the time she's uh, been around. She is now out in the open world and we wish her well. Kath, we love you and congratulations on the years. It's time, time to ask Kath to say for a few words. And then no, Kath the Kate.
So they met each other, they met each other tonight and they're going to perform for us. Woo! 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 So this is, this is really fantastic. Following this performance, it's basically a performance to indicate what you will be doing after it. <laughs> so if all the girls have put their names in the house, this will be going into the <laughs> continually. And then we'll do some other stuff. Um, and also, oh, can I get everyone to sign the um, blow up guitar and the blow up <laughs> microphone? Um, and yeah, basically, if you just want to keep your eye on what's going to be happening up the front and get a feel for the moves, because um, this is my little way of passing on um, yeah, my, my attitude out back to you. All here, conglomerated, all this loving, special. Specialness in one room. So, um, I might just hand it over. This is the shortest speech I've ever made. That's a worry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I'll pass it over to Lara and Peter. Woo! Then I'll get the information about what is going to happen. Just you want this film? No. This, this whole thing? No, no I'm fine, I'm fine, darling. Yeah. But just as long as she. But I'll, I'll well, film them. Try to, yes, try if you can. I'll come back to That's the cake.
<laughs> the aftermath. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just using still all the camera apparently. I don't know what's going on. Anyway. My beautiful boyfriend's in the other room. Talking to my beautiful mother. And I forgot to thank you all. So thank you so much, Mum and Dad, for having me and giving birth to me. I love you with all my heart and soul. I mean, bye.